Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter where it's all about making better videos. Today we're gonna look at another section of the corporate video guide. This comes from the post-production section. At the very beginning of that section, I talk about importing media. Sounds really straightforward. Most of us just click import and then we're done. But um, I wanna show you a couple tricks that might save your bacon later. So let's go ahead and take a look. This first section of post-production, we're going to talk about ingesting media, which is really important because this is where all that precious data that we captured gets over to our computer and our hard drive. So it's important to have a system in place so that nothing gets lost during that import. I'll show you how I deal with importing and it involves the process we already set up when we talked about media management on set. So let's head over to the computer and take a look. So the first thing I do when ingesting cards is I take the first card I'm going to import and I peel off that piece of tape that we created earlier. Plug in the card to my computer and I put that piece of tape right on the computer where I'm plugging it in. If you have a multi-card reader, go ahead and use that piece of tape next to each slot. This way we can tell exactly which card is which and uh, we can keep track of all that. Once I have my card in, I go ahead and make sure my project is set up. So you can see on my RAID here, I have a sample project. I created this using post haste, which we have already talked about. And I'm going to import the card twice. The first time is going to be a camera archive. Final Cut Pro has a great system for creating camera archives. If you aren't using Final Cut, you can also just copy the footage into a folder called camera archives. The idea here is we have one place where the cards get imported and they're never touched from that location. So if media gets disconnected down the road, we can always go back and we have essentially a copy or a clone of our actual cards. So you can see here, I have a folder dedicated to camera archives. So let's go ahead and open up the project. So I'm going to hit Command I to start an import and we have our card selected. Here's our clip. And you can see down in the lower left here, we have this button that says create archive. I'm going to click that and select our RAID, our project, and then I'm gonna to navigate to the camera archives. If you have a shoot with several different days, it's a good idea to go ahead and date that folder. And then I'm going to change the camera name to A1 and then dash, and I leave the Canon in, that way I can tell it's from the C100. So now we know that this is camera A card one, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Archive. And what Final Cut is doing is creating a perfect clone of that card. So down the road, something goes wrong and something gets disconnected or somebody messes with your RAID and deletes something, you can always go back and reconnect your media. Okay, so Final Cut just completed creating the archive. Let's go back to our project here and we see we have that new folder and boom, there is our archive. So I love having this. I, it's already saved my bacon several times with the project, so I highly recommend doing this. If you're using Premiere, just create a folder and import your footage there. You can create an archive or zip it from that point, and then if you need to access it later, you can. Now that we have the camera archive, we can now actually import our footage into our project. So this is very straightforward, just like we would normally. I hit import here and there's our clip. So the idea here is we have our camera archive nice and safe, and then we have our actual import into the project that we can go ahead and start editing with. Once the import is complete, we know we can take the card out of our computer, unlock the card, and it is ready for use, knowing that we have two copies of it on our machine. So that's kind of a process I've been using to import media for about six months now. Um, every once in a while I have a little problem, so having this dual importing setup is really, really great. Um, it's also nice if you do a lot of name changing or file name changing in your workflow. So that way if something goes wrong, you can always go back and you have that perfect untouched copy of your SD card. If you guys have any tips for importing media, I love to hear about it. So definitely leave a comment below. And if you'd like to learn more about the corporate video guide, check out the link in the description. You'll find the trailer as well as where you can pick up a full copy of the guide. So that does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.